hey guys welcome back to another video uh, this is a very interesting topic or at least i believe it's an interesting topic uh, which is perspective of the csr exam after seven years so the whole objective behind making this video is to give you an idea that how what is the importance of the exam why is there a mad rush after i've had some experience right now some of you might be new to the channel or might be wondering why should we listen to this guy so maybe i'll just tell you a bit about my qualifications so i've done a bachelor's in chemistry a master's in organic chemistry and then a phd in medicinal chemistry from Naipur, hyderabad thereafter i worked for a year in uh, dr reddy's like a subsidiary of dr reddy's as a research scientist then i worked for a year as a postdoc at delhi university and currently i am a research assistant professor at uh, adam mickiewicz university that is in poland now i guess you might trust me a little bit why do people give CSR exam? Primarily, it is for three reasons. One is teaching uh, or uh, in the sense that if you want to go become a professor, okay, that is one kind of teaching. The second kind of teaching is uh, when you want to get, get into coaching or so that is another one. And third one is as a fellowship to uh, maybe, you know, uh, to what? To, to do a PhD, right? So that is the main, uh, primarily, I think these are the three reasons why uh, candidates or students give the examination. So let's dissect each one of them and see how much importance does it hold in each of these three things. So first, let's talk about uh, fellowships, which I believe is very important because CSR exam, you know, is one of the major uh, uh, sources of funding for a particular student. And once a student has his, his or her own fellowship, they can virtually join any lab of their choice and in any particular city. So that gives you that sort of a flexibility to go to any lab. So let's say you can't, for some reason, you know, you tried and I have, I know very, very good researchers who have not been able to qualify CSR exam, right? So let's say for some reason you are not able to qualify. So does that mean that you do not have any other opportunity? Not at all. For those of you who might not be aware, gate exam is there. Niper exams are there. So Niper exam or the gate exam is an uh, alternate of getting a fellowship. So through gate examination, you will become eligible to apply to ICERs, to IITs and to major uh, central institutions. And uh, once you qualify the interview, you are definitely eligible to get the fellowship. Now, let's say you did not qualify the gate exam also and you could not qualify Niper also, but you really, really have that interest to do a PhD. So might as well go abroad. See, I did not do a PhD from abroad. I had very different reasons and not many people are going to resonate with those reasons. I have seen this, that uh, professors from IITs, like a lot of my students or people I have interacted with uh, from IITs and ICERs, their professors, in fact, push them in masters to do a PhD abroad. Generally, might be applicable to a lot of students that, yes, a PhD from abroad is better and I can see that. Like, obviously, the opportunities are better. The fellowship is not that great compared to the cost of living, but fellowship is still good. The, like you have more research facilities. I would not say fellowship is, is very good. In fact, a lot of people abroad are struggling because of the fellowship. It's not that great compared to, like I said, the cost of living, but it, it, does, it does its job. Uh, it gives you a comfortable stay, but more importantly, you get more exposure. Um, ex exposure definitely is a plus, a big plus, and the facilities obviously are better abroad. So I, I see why they sort of, uh, push more students to go abroad uh, but anyway coming back to the topic so like nobody is going to take you uh, uh, for a PhD abroad till the time you do not have some sort of research experience so if you are from a privileged institute in India like ICES, IITs or central universities you might have a thesis or a research project in your masters that might give you open doors for you to do a PhD abroad but let's say you are not from one of these institutes project assistant project fellowship is a very 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 good opportunity and i would like to give you two examples over here uh, so there are many more don't treat them as an exception there are many many more people who have got uh, a position abroad and have not qualified any competitive examination in india like they might have tried them and they could not qualify and then they found this route of going abroad uh, so like for example prem is there uh, he's a, a is a good friend of mine. Tried for gate, he tried for uh, net. Unfortunately, could not qualify. But he was a fa like he was a very very good researcher. Uh, so he got a project assistant position at IIT Hyderabad. He worked there for I think a year or more than that. And then he got a, P a PhD uh, position in Europe. 
similarly there's another very very good friend of mine kanika she was my batchmate so after uh, after master she worked for uh, she tried for gate and net exam unfortunately again could not qualify either one of them but then after two to and a half years she had some research experience in fact she was working in in a competitive examination industry but she had a lot of research experience from her masters right and after two to and a half years she got a phd position in us uh, her story is very inspirational to be very honest and uh, maybe i'll try and get, get her on the platform for an interview and we can discuss because generally what happens is that if you do not have if you lose the track of research like like i said after masters for two to and a half years she had no exposure to research so it's very difficult for one to find a position that way uh, but somehow she did it and that's that's uh, incredible so what i'm saying is basically that if you get a project fellow position or a project assistant position right after your masters uh, let's say while you are giving the competitive examinations or let's say you you tried competitive exams for a year after masters unfortunately could not qualify don't have a fellowship you could not get into a phd see getting into phd without fellowship is a big no no please don't ever do that you need to have a fellowship okay so that is something that you should keep in mind please do not go for a phd without any fellowship that's very important so what you can do is maybe one year you can try for competitive exams if you absolutely want to do a phd from india and then if not then obviously you can try and find positions abroad but the other thing is that yes you can get some experience through project assistant a project fellow positions now don't ask me what exactly is that it's it's a era of internet so obviously you can google what is a project fellow what is a project project position and how to get one opportunity like that okay uh, so i think we have discussed this enough the second point is about coaching centers so like if you want to teach in coaching centers so that is again it's not absolutely necessary and uh, i think the prime example of this is chemistry untold so yogi sir many of you might know uh, he does not have a csr qualification but he is an excellent educator so ultimately your teaching skills matter okay so yes maybe it might give you an edge initially if you qualified csr exam maybe some coaching industry or some big company might hire you based on your rank in csr exam but that is just the initial basis if you are not performing ultimately if you are not teaching well if you are not doing well you will be thrown out right so yes initially it might give you a competitive edge that yes you have a csr rank but i think in the end it does not really matter much because it's very similar to like if you go for let's say a fitness uh, trainer and uh, ultimately you might have a lot of qualifications or you might have a very good physique but if you cannot really translate it into your client it, it really does not matter so similarly if you have qualified cs an exam it's great but if you haven't it doesn't really matter till the time you are giving the output you are a good teacher you are able to uh, uh, make students understand a concept and the third one is the lectureship that is the net qualification because uh, in india there's always this up and down whether net qualification is required or not uh, to become an assistant professor you have done your phd from a top 500 ranked institution in the world then you don't have to qualify the net exam like you are exempt from the net exam qualification criteria so these criteria keep on changing so that is one thing that i would say that yes if you have qualified the net exam i am not talking about the grf the fellowship i am just talking about the net lectureship exam like these are the same exams but the cut off for lectureship is lower so if you qualify the ls exam it just gives you a peace of mind that's all okay in the sense that you don't have to worry about what is the regulation because see like for example in delhi university uh, when you apply for as an assistant professor there are certain marks for qualifying ls so even if you have phd so phd i think has 25 or 30 marks but if you have qualified the net exam then you will get 8 marks so over there net exam is not mandatory but they have given a good amount of weightage to the net exam like 8 marks they have given so that way like every institution has a different norm there is no central norm as such uh in fact if you talk about iits icers they don't even care about your net exam qualification they just see your research output so in the end yes so, like if i talk about the net exam in particular the net ls exam the lectureship exam it just it's there to give you a peace of mind like yes you have qualified the net ls exam and you don't have to worry about the regulations so if you want to come back and join india as a faculty if you have qualified net ls exam you just have that peace of mind you don't have to again and again worry about what is the regulation what is the criteria 
so that that's all that the net ls exam does for you so ultimately my uh, whole idea of making this this uh, video of uh, perspective of csr exam after 7 years is to tell you that uh, like whatever opportunities this exam presents to you those opportunities might get a bit delayed if you don't qualify this exam but nobody can actually like this exam does not give you it's not the only way to get to do something that you truly want i mean you can do it without this exam as well. so don't get me wrong it's not a stupid exam i mean if you qualify it great kudos to you but even if you don't whatever you desire might get delayed but would ultimately get to you it's not like an infinite barrier that if you don't qualify this exam you will not be able to reach your goal so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you have any suggestions or any comments do let me know in the comment section and i'll try my best to address that thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video take care